All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Phil Geiger. I'm the managing director of concierge services at Unchained Capital, and I'm excited to be spending a romantic evening talking about multi-sig. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm calling this presentation a love letter to multi-sig because when Michael was so gracious uh, to invite me here this evening, uh, an internet troll named Matt O'Dell responded with, this man asked your wife if she needs help storing her Bitcoin, what do you do? So I'm dedicating, I'm dedicating a love letter to Bitcoin to Matt O'Dell and all of the lovely ladies in his life. Uh, I've chosen three flowers in the upper left-hand corner for a very specific reason that we'll get into later. Uh, what we're going to be talking about this evening is why multi-sig is important. We're going to go through a few of the multi-sig basics, so a little crash course into how multi-sig works. And then I'm going to show off uh, an open source tool that Unchained Capital put together called Caravan. And Caravan allows you to just play around with multi-sig very easily in the browser. But first, just to define multi-sig, multi-signature is a type of Bitcoin address that is constructed from multiple keys and that requires multiple keys to spend. So you can have a Bitcoin address that's one of two or two of three. Built from three keys requires two keys to spend from it. Why is this important or why is this something that we should be thinking about? Well, when done correctly, multi-sig allows you to uh, you know, hold the keys to your Bitcoin so you have full control over your funds. It eliminates all single points of failure from the security of your setup. And it allows you, I think really importantly, to make a relatively critical mistake without losing your Bitcoin. So we've all heard those stories of the guy who, you know, forgot the pin to his treasure and is now locked out of, you know, $100 million worth of Bitcoin. Uh, or we've heard the person who, uh, you know, lost their hard drive in a landfill and it's full of, you know, millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin today. If they had been using multi-sig, they might still have a chance to recover those funds because they would have just lost maybe one key when two out of three were required to actually spend the Bitcoin. So if you've ever held the keys to your Bitcoin, you kind of know like, hey, this little device or, you know, Trezor Ledger, cold card, uh, passport, other devices, they can become single points of failure if you're just using one key. And so that's why I really like multi-sig because it eliminates all single points of failure. Another really nice reason to be just thinking about multi-sig is that it helps with inheritance. So many of us believe that Bitcoin is going to be the global reserve currency or we're going to pass our Bitcoin on to our descendants. Um, but how do you do that? How do you set your Bitcoin security up in a way that doesn't tell your you know, existing relatives how much Bitcoin you have or create them as a single point of failure? So. There's, I've heard a story, and I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, somebody was setting up a single signature wallet. They gave a key to a relative uh, who they really trusted because, you know, you want to give your keys only to people that you really trust. And the relative just had a, you know, less of an understanding of Bitcoin and was phishing attacked. So they got an email. They entered the seed phrase into the email and lost their loved one's Bitcoin. Multisig. So it protects you from that type of attack, but also um, doesn't create relatives as single points of failure when you're trying to think about passing on your Bitcoin uh, to future generations. So that's why I'm really passionate about multi-sig. That's why I wrote this love letter to multi-sig. Okay, we're gonna get a little technical, but I think this will be gentle. I tried to make this as gentle as possible. So we're gonna start by learning about multi-sig and how it's created. But first we have to understand what is a Bitcoin address? So on the right side of the screen is a Bitcoin address. There's a little QR code. There's an alphanumeric uh, string below. That's a location where Bitcoin live. Now, where Bitcoin do not live specifically are on your hardware wallets. Your Bitcoin live in addresses. All Bitcoin addresses are visible and are tracked on the blockchain. Uh, so you can look up any Bitcoin address, including all of Satoshi's addresses where he has millions of coins uh, and so on. 
But the way that you move Bitcoin is through the use of keys. So you build Bitcoin addresses with keys, and then you use keys to move them. So when we think of constructing a single address, you'll have a private key, which very oftentimes lives on one of these devices. The device will share what's known as a public key, which I like to think of as a lock. If the private key is a key, the public key is the lock. The public key is packaged together and created into a Bitcoin address. So you have, in this case, an address with one lock and one key. That's a single signature address. How does multi-sig work? Pretty much the same way, except you have multiple keys. So uh, starting from maybe two keys or three keys in this example above, each of those keys is going to share a single lock and all three of those locks are packaged together into one address. So this could be a two of three address, for example. You have three seed phrases, they each share public keys, those public keys are packaged together and displayed in a Bitcoin address, which might look just like this address, could look identical to that. That could be a multi-sig address. Okay, we're gonna get a little bit more technical, but this is as technical as we get. So how is a Bitcoin wallet constructed? And I think of a wallet as a series of Bitcoin addresses that are controlled by one or many keys. So if a single address is constructed from a single public key, a Bitcoin wallet is constructed from extended public keys. So an extended public key would be like a master lock that can create individual locks from it. It's not the key. The master key is a seed phrase, but the master lock is the extended public key. So if you share an extended public key with a uh, an individual, they can see all your Bitcoin addresses, but unless they have the key, they can't move the Bitcoin addresses. So an extended public key can be used to derive nearly infinite individual public keys, and you share them with wallet software. So you plug in your hardware wallet. Uh, if it's a Trezor, you might typically be using Trezor Suite. Your little device will share an extended public key with Trezor Suite, and Trezor Suite will show you all of your addresses. So again, the Bitcoin doesn't live here. The public keys and private keys live here. Trezor Suite would be the software that's displaying your wallet, your addresses, and it's all controlled by the private key on this device. So if we think about a multi-sig address as constructed from three individual public keys, a multi-sig wallet, which is a series of multi-sig addresses, is constructed from multiple extended public keys. So there's one additional piece of information that you always have to keep in mind when you're working with multi-sig, and it's this idea of a wallet configuration file, which contains basically the directions to all your addresses. It's a little file, I think of it as like the treasure map. Uh, you need your treasure map and you need your keys. If you have your treasure map and you don't have the keys, you can see your treasure, but you can't move it. You can't open the treasure chest. If you just have a key and no map, it's like finding a key on the ground. You don't know where you can use it. Why is the wallet configuration file important? Why is it important to know this? Well, in multi-sig, the file is what allows you to sovereignly recover your multi-sig Bitcoin without relying on any single piece of software. Um, so many of you might be familiar, you know, if you have uh, a single signature Bitcoin wallet on a Trezor, you can recover your seed phrase, which is your master private key, onto a ledger, and you can see your full wallet on Ledger Live. Similar thing holds true with multi-sig. If you have an unchained wallet file for your unchained vault, you can take that wallet file and pop it into Caravan, which is again our open source tool, which I'll show you next. Uh, you can pop it into Sparrow and it'll show your balance as well. And then other tools such as Electrum. So multi-sig recovery kind of requires a little bit of a combination of things. So it's slightly more uh, technical than single signature. But again, the reason that this is important is because once we get things set up, each individual item that we're securing is not a critical single point of failure. We can't lose our Bitcoin if we lose one or sometimes even two items. All right, with that, I'm gonna show you uh, how Caravan works. And Caravan, again, is Unchained's open source multi-sig tool. It allows you to play around with multi-sig, get to know it. And it also allows you to recover your Unchained vault without Unchained even existing.
because you have the file, you have your treasure map, you have your keys, you can recover your Bitcoin. Caravan lives at caravanmultisig.com. So you can just type in caravanmultisig.com and it takes you right here where you can build a wallet or an address. And what we'll do this evening is build a wallet. I'm gonna call this wallet ABC wallet. And since I only have two devices, I'm gonna make it a one of two multi-signature address. This first key, I'm gonna name Cantheon, and I'm gonna plug in my ledger and unlock it. I'll select ledger here, enter my pin, open up the Bitcoin app on my ledger, and then I'll say import extended public key, because remember, my device holds the private key, it shares the extended public key with wallet software in order to build our wallets. This is what an XPUB actually looks like. It's just another string of alphanumeric characters. Next, I'll do my second key, which is on my Trezor. I'll name this XPUB Rothbard. Woo! There we go. I'll hit import extended public key. I'll connect my Trezor and enter my pin on the device. Give it permission to share my extend public key. Not using a passphrase. Actually, passphrases are not recommended with multisig. It kind of adds complexity. And here are my two extended public keys to my one of two multi-signature wallet. If I hit confirm, Caravan's gonna generate all my addresses for me. Hitting receive here will show my first one of two multi-signature address. And I'm gonna actually send a little bit of Bitcoin here, but before I send Bitcoin to any address, it's really important to check your address on your device because otherwise you're just trusting this tool. You're not trusting your keys. So I'll confirm my address on the device, select Rothbard, select Trezor. <laughs> Rothbard's getting some shout outs tonight. And on my device, which you won't be able to see, uh, it's showing multi-sig one of two, and it's displaying this address, three, three, four, BY, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I can confirm that, and I know now that this address is safe to send some Bitcoin to. So I'll just send uh, just a few thousand sats. Uh, opening up my mobile wallet, scanning the address here, and I will send 5,000 sats. Yes. <laughs> it's a bear market. <laughs> <laughs> Always test in prod, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, looks like my wallet has broadcasted, and I should see it appear here. So now, uh, my transaction's appearing here as unconfirmed. You know, we're still waiting on the miners to go through and actually mine the block and process the transaction added to the blockchain. But I want to show you one really cool thing that ties back to what we learned earlier. So I'm going to download my wallet file. Remember, the wallet file is like the treasure map to my multi-signature address. So now with that treasure map, I can find my multi-signature wallet from another software. And what I'll do here is I will recover my wallet on uh, Sparrow, which is a, just another cool wallet software that we really, really enjoy using at Unchained. I'm gonna do new wallet. I'll call this wallet ABC wallet. Whoops. I will do import wallet, caravan multisig. I will grab my ABC wallet file, hit create. I'm gonna skip a password here. And Sparrow has just recovered my multisig wallet. So as you can see, I have 5,000 sats here. It's not confirmed, but I just wanted to show everyone how easy it is to use multisig across a few different tools. Uh, the other thing that I think is really cool about multi-sig, and I'm going to show you here, is if somebody finds my seed phrase to my Trezor, Rothbard, 
and loads that seed phrase onto another hardware wallet, like uh, Trezor Suite, for example. So they have my seed phrase. Maybe they even have the hardware wallet and have my pin. What they won't see is any of the multi-sig Bitcoin. So if I connect my wallet, my hardware wallet to Trezor Suite, which is how most people use you know, their Trezor or Ledger Live if they're using a Ledger, um, they're not going to see the multi-signature Bitcoin because, again, they don't have the Trezor map. They have the key, but they don't know where they can use the key. So this is what I think makes multi-sig excellent for the inheritance situation. You can give a seed phrase to somebody that you trust, like still should be somebody in your closest circle, and even if that person is compromised, somebody with the seed phrase can't find your multi-sig Bitcoin. They see a balance of zero when we know that this wallet is a one of two, uh, one of two keys to our ABC wallet, which has 5,000 sats in it. All right. So if you just zoned out, weren't paying attention, if you can take away one thing from this presentation, it's that multi-sig eliminates all single points of failure, particularly when you're doing multi-sig with a partner that is holding one key. So it doesn't have to be unchained. It could be a relative, could be um, you know, another, uh, like Hasa, uh, another collaborative custody partner. But if you've spread your keys out geographically and include a partner in your multi-sig setup, there's no single points of failure for your Bitcoin. So you can lose an entire key, which is a device and its seed phrase, and you have the remaining two keys. Uh, you could lose both of your hardware wallets, and you're fine because you have your two seed phrases. Um, something could happen to you. You could get injured or incapacitated, and a loved one with a seed phrase could work with another partner. And then if you lose, uh, if your partner uh, goes out of business or stops functioning for any reason, you can recover because you have your treasure map. And the opposite's true as well. If you lose your treasure map, you have your partner. All right, with that, uh, that's the end of my presentation. That's the end of my love letter to multi-sig. I hope you have all found some sort of romantic attraction to multi-sig as I have. Uh, thank you very much. I think so, we have some time for questions if anyone does have questions. Right? Definitely. And if you have a question, let us hand you a mic so that we can uh, make sure everyone here. Um, it's super easy. Uh, what software wallet did you use on your phone? Like, what do you recommend? Like, top three? I, uh, I saw yeah. Sparrow. So on, on my phone, on my so I have an Android device, and uh, for layer one transactions, I like to use Samurai Wallet. Um, for uh, my Lightning transactions, I'm a huge fan of Phoenix. They've just made it so easy. All right. Thank you. What are some ways in which someone should store their either their keys and or their treasure maps, like, you know, magnet to the fridge or what are, what are we talking here? Yeah, so the key with multi-sig is uh, it will eliminates all single points of failure as long as not all the items are in the same place. Because if you have all of your items in the same physical location, then you've just recreated uh, the old system, unsecure things like Fort Knox, where you can just break into Fort Knox and then you have all the gold. With multi-sig, as long as you've separated your items, you can't break into a single physical location or even remote hack you to find your Bitcoin. So the basic first step with any multi-sig wallet is to separate one seed phrase from all the other items. And then if your primary location, you know, if something happens or you're attacked maliciously, you still have, uh, well, this is multi-sig with a partner. You'll still have your partner uh, who can help you recover your funds. If you're doing multi-sig on your own, I would definitely recommend separating more elements. Um, now, secure locations are really dependent on your living situation, but it could be a safe at home, could be an office safe, it could be a safety deposit box at a bank if you trust banks, it could be a trusted relative who has a safe, uh, but you do want to keep them locked away and ideally separated. So even if you only have two or three locations uh, and you have these different things that you're managing, don't put you know, two keys in the exact same safe. Put one key in a safe and then another key in a locked drawer or something. So separate them across different geographic organization, uh, locations and then even within the different locations. And then for the, the, the wallet file, you can actually keep that digital. 
because again, it's just the treasure map. Somebody with that file can't move your Bitcoin. Uh, so I typically like to, to store that in something like a password manager. You're trusting all of your uh, passwords with your tra password manager. I think it's okay to trust your wallet configuration file. And the benefit there is then you're not tied down to any physical computer to find your multi-sig Bitcoin. If you have your wallet file and a password manager, you could hop on a plane down to El Salvador, you know, get into an internet cafe, load up your multi-sig wallet, and then if you have your two keys, you're good to go. So, so storing your wallet file digitally in a secure digital manner, so password manager, encrypted cloud storage, is I think uh, opens up a lot of flexibility. If you keep your wallet file physical, you just have to remember that that's another physical item that you do have to secure. And I, I don't really recommend securing the wallet file with your keys because then if somebody finds a key, they also know what the key is protecting. So uh, yeah. to the previous question, uh, is Samurai only Android like ex only or is it also iOS? I believe it's Android only, and they do have like a full node software, but I, I'm not really familiar with that. Right, gotcha. And then also, um, I, I, I'm curious because I've heard from other people that you can make your own like Bitcoin wallets and do a multi-sig with like multiple wallets, but they don't necessarily have to be hardware wallets as well. So, I mean, if you have a blue wallet, but blue wallet enables the ability to have multiple separate, separate Bitcoin wallets. So you could theoretically make a multi-sig for a multiple Bitcoin, like a blue wallet wallets, correct? So the, I think the answer is you can make multi-sig from multiple seed phrases. Mm -hmm. And so with blue wallet, your seed phrase is living on a device. Right. Uh, so um, yes, you can use blue wallet to create a multi-sig, but you, would, you should consider that a hotkey. Anytime your seed phrase has come in contact with a device that communicates with the internet, consider that a hotkey. Right. Um, so, you know, I think it's totally fine to do multi-sig with a hotkey, but just be aware that one of the keys is hot. And if you want to go like ultra security, I would make sure that all your seed phrases are cold. Right. Which but, is when you generate them offline. Right. But theoretically within that like hot device, if we call it that, you can make multiple wallets within Blue Wallet. Yeah, so... So you could theoretically, like, do a two or three, like, you make two Bitcoin-only wallets, like, not Lightning, like, Bitcoin wallets, you could do a two or three of that. Be, because in, in Blue Wallet, like, there, there's the Bitcoin option and the Lightning option. Yeah. So you could theoretically make three Bitcoin wallets within Blue Wallet and do, and take two of those Blue Wallets and make it two or three. Yeah, you can make... Wallets, so, correct? so starting from your seed phrases, your seed right. phrases are your keys. Like if you have two seed phrases, regardless of where they're living, yeah, you can create single signature wallets with those seed phrases. You can create multi-signature wallets with those seed phrases. And you can even create, you can use the same seed phrases and create two separate multi-signature wallets. Um, the point there is uh, like an individual XPUB can derive nearly infinite additional public keys. So you can build all different kinds of wallets. And I guess another kind of weird feature about extended public keys is you can derive extended public keys from extended public keys. So yo dog, I heard you like XPubs. So I derived XPub from your XPubs so that you can build multi-state wallets. Uh, yeah. So you can use Blue Wallet to have a single signature wallet there. So Blue Wallet is the software. Right. Blue Wallet holds a seed phrase. You can use that seed phrase to generate a single signature wallet, which is a collection of addresses. Right. And then you can use that same seed phrase within Blue Wallet to create multi-signature wallets. So I think what, what many of you might be realizing right now is the term wallet in Bitcoin is used uh, like what I'm getting at is that What I'm, I'm getting at is that you don't need a physical hardware device to do multi-sig. Correct. You need seed phrases. Exactly. Yes. And the hardware devices make it such that like, I don't know, you know. It makes you feel better. Yeah, it makes you feel a lot better. I mean, you, yeah, so, you, you can hide it under your pillow and, and sleep well at night. So the, yes. the issue with generating seed phrases on your phone is that your phone is not, like, purpose-built to generate and protect seed phrases. Uh, so this is running Android, which is, like, a wide-open operating system. Uh, I don't know what I've been downloading, you know, late at night, whatever. Uh, this device... 
these devices are purpose built to generate and protect Bitcoin keys. So that's why they're considered cold storage versus a mobile phone is a hot wallet. Cold card all the way. Cold card is another good signing device is, is what they're going by now. They yes. identify as a signing device. I, I, I call them quills because like you're signing, but like with a quill. All right. Are there any other questions? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Quick question. Uh, quick question. When you recovered your wallet in Sparrow, were you recovering it as a watch only wallet? Because you were using your file, uh, like the wallet file, but that didn't have your private keys on it. So I'm recovering the, the multi signature wallet. And then if I wanted to spend Bitcoin, I would have to connect my devices and sign transactions. So it's the answer is. Kind of like you can use the file for the watch only purpose. Like think of it as this, the, it, it is the same purpose as a single XPUB with a single signature wallet. So you can share a single XPUB and somebody with that can see all of your addresses in single signature. In multisig, if you share the wallet file, then somebody with that file can see all of the addresses. So yes and no. Like I, it was a, it's a live wallet. I can use Sparrow to sign transactions. Until I sign with my keys, it is watch only. Okay, sweet. Yeah. Anyone else? So, uh, okay. yeah. Is it deterministic? Yes. Thanks. That's the that was the the XPubs on XPubs joke. <laughs> I'll just kind of say, you know, maybe we could elaborate a little bit on at what point. Would somebody start or should somebody start to consider, you know, doing multi-sig or even just like getting a hardware wallet to begin with? Like at what point, how much Bitcoin or whatever, at what point should someone consider something like that? Sure. Well, I think um, everybody is capable of holding their own keys. And if you're not holding your own keys, you are making a security trade-off whether or not you are doing it um, on purpose. So if you're like, oh, I'm nervous about private keys, I'm going to use a custodian, uh, you are making a security trade-off because the way that you access your custodian is exposed to the open internet 24-7, 365. If somebody breaks into that account, they have your Bitcoin. Um, if something happens with your custodian, which we've seen many times over Bitcoin's history, you've lost your Bitcoin. So you have a lot of different uh, attack vectors if you are using a custodian. So I will say, I highly recommend everybody hold their own keys. It's very easy to generate a wallet uh, just on a mobile phone. Generate your keys, play around with it, get used to it. But I think everybody should be holding their own keys. And I also believe that everybody should be using multi-sig for their long-term storage. Like, if you are treating your Bitcoin as uh, multi-generational wealth, there's no better alternative than multi-sig today because, again, any other alternative has some single point of failure somewhere. Multisig, when done correctly, eliminates all single point of failure. If you're nervous about getting set up, uh, this is the Unchained shell time, but that's what we do at Unchained, that's the concierge team. Um, we will walk you from A to Z through setting up your first hardware wallets, building your multi-signature addresses, learning about all these different elements, moving your funds from uh, Coinbase uh, or wherever, and getting secured. Um, if this is your first time with Bitcoin, you can also buy Bitcoin directly into your Unchained vault, and then I would just skip ever using a custodian. You don't need a custodian, in my opinion. I'll play along with your Unchained shill here. All right. Uh, <laughs> my mom and dad are very untechnically savvy, and I'm not the best either, so I don't feel like I'd be the best teacher in that specific aspect. Do you guys have like an online version that I could maybe connect them with you guys, and you could give them the full... Yep. Boomer version. Yeah, that's the that's the concierge onboarding program. Like, cool. It's yeah. We we charge two hundred fifty dollars for our time. They have to buy hardware wallets if they don't have them. You can also bring your own if you don't want us to ship you them. That's fine. Uh, and we will set up the hardware wallets. So like, help them go through the steps of writing down their seed phrases. Help them build the multi sig vault, which it, it looks a little bit nicer for the Unchained vault than Caravan. Caravan again is our open source tool. Uh, but yeah, we will walk them from A to Z through the step. And then it also, uh, we do a lot of the continuing education webinars and technical support. So yeah. if you lose a seed phrase, uh, the concierge team at Unchained is the team that you call up and will hop on, uh, hop on the video chat and recover your Bitcoin. We also uh, do things like help you with 
help you set up a UTXO strategy, which we're not going to go into right now, but a bunch of different kind of, uh, yeah, longer term things that you have to start thinking about with self-custody. Probably pretty common for people to split around a family too, because like my, my parents are pretty low key where they live. They have like a good safe and I bounce all over the place. So it's good to have one that's pretty locked down. I think that's one of the, the biggest benefits of multi-sig is you can give a key, you can give a seed phrase to a non-technical relative just say, put this in your safe, let me know if you lose it, and nothing that they do can cause you to lose that Bitcoin, right? It's just one key. If they lose the key, you have two more keys. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a really nice benefit in multi-sig to help you eliminate, again, where yourself and where you're living as a single point of failure. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, and just to say, like, you can do multi-location, multi-jurisdictional, right. multi-device, and again, it, it can get really complicated, but you know, whatever is going to help you sleep better at night uh, is great. And also, just you kind of talked about earlier about how there was somebody that lost their hard drive uh, or was in a landfill in like the UK, right? Yeah. Millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. There have been somewhere between what? Six million out of the 21 million Bitcoin lost forever, they're, they're estimating. Um, the likely scenario is that person that just had his laptop sitting around somewhere had no idea that whenever he was securing it at that time, like that it was going to be worth as much as it is today. Um, so that's just a big mistake. So um, kind of up my own question, it's never too early to start properly securing your Bitcoin because maybe those 5,000 sats that Super was talking about is uh, the lake, lakefront property one, <laughs> one day, right? So. That's right. You should be thinking about, so when Bitcoin starts ripping, it rips like way harder than a lot of people are prepared for. <laughs> And so think about what you're protecting today and then think about 10x the value or 100x the value. Um, and you can just get set up with multi-sig today and then you're, you've achieved the highest level of security once you've geographically separated the items. So you don't really have to spend a lot of time and, and anxiety like spreading out all your different funds. I think I, I talked to a lot of people who maybe have multiple single signature wallets. So they'll buy a ledger, they'll buy a treasure, they'll buy a cold card, they'll buy a passport, and they'll set up single signature wallets and load some of their funds on each of those devices. Well, now you have four single points of failure. If any one of those is lost, you've lost Bitcoin. In, again, in multi-sig's case, if you lose one of the items or two of the items, you haven't lost any Bitcoin. Absolutely. Any other questions? Yeah, over here. Don't be shy. Why that is in terms of UTXO management from the most broad. I know yeah. that's probably a detailed required answer there, but from the most broad perspective. Sure. So remember when I said earlier, all Bitcoin live at addresses, and addresses are tracked by the blockchain. But what Bitcoin are are really chunks of data that live at those addresses. So if you have um, if you have one Bitcoin, uh, you can send one Bitcoin to your address, and then you have one. UTXO. That's what a chunk of Bitcoin is called, a UTXO. Now, in Bitcoin, uh, you're paying for the amount of data that you're sending around, not the amount of Bitcoin you're sending around. Um, so if you have one chunk of data, it's going to be very cheap to send the Bitcoin around the Bitcoin network. Um, if you have 100 chunks of data, it's going to be very expensive to send all, to ship all of that data around the network. So Bitcoin, in order to maintain the fixed supply of 21 million, is very lightweight. They, they, we want everybody who wants to run the software to be able to run the software on cheap computers. So the entire history of transactions is about 400 something gigabytes worth of data. You know, it can fit on a phone. That's really, really important. And so data management to make sure that we're not growing the, the security burden, or sorry, the data burden on all of these different computers is something that we think about a lot. So UTXO management is important, data management is important, so that you know, if uh, transaction fees spike, so every time you send a transaction, you include a tip to the miners to say, hey miners, I wanna move this Bitcoin, and they'll be like, oh, that's, that's a great tip, I'm gonna move that. Uh, and you have to compete for block space, so for the, the data space. So anyways, I guess to recap, uh, we help people set up a strategy for themselves, a data strategy, because a lot of times people are dollar cost averaging Bitcoin, buying every week, stacking sats, and then they're left with hundreds of 
chunks of data and they don't realize how expensive that can be to actually move your Bitcoin at the time that you want to move it. Another case where this is really important is mining. So when you're mining Bitcoin, you're receiving a lot of chunks of data, a lot of small amounts of Bitcoin. And uh, you, can, you can leave a lot of money on the table if you don't have a good strategy around this stuff. Um, so we just help to kind of formulate a strategy that's right for you. Other things to consider are privacy trade-offs. So if you have 100 chunks of Bitcoin uh, and you have 10 Bitcoin out of 100 chunks, um, you can move one of those chunks and it doesn't tell the rest of the world that you have 10 Bitcoin. If you only have one chunk of data that's worth 10 Bitcoin and you send it to uh, somebody, they can see, oh, this person had 10 Bitcoin. So just another consideration. It's a very nuanced, uh, nuanced discussion. We have, uh, we have Tom Hanzik in the audience here, the UTXO slayer. Um, so he can go into details if you have more questions about it. He actually wrote, I think, three of the best articles about this topic, uh, and that's on the Unchained blog. So you can check those out. Thank you. Maybe one more question. Don't be shy. When taproot. <laughs> Uh, well, Ben, we're, we're looking for engineers, so if you want to, <laughs> you can send me your resume. Uh, no, those are, those, uh, are coming down the line. Um, so Taproot with multi-sig has a lot of, uh, it, it has, there's a lot of work that needs to be done before uh, Taproot, multi-sig Taproot is going to work. So hardware wallets need to have uh, a bunch of additional functionality. We need to agree on standards. Uh, then we need to actually build out the workflows and stuff. Um, Segwit, it's coming soon, TM. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, all right, I think you guys will hire me, I don't know. So, um, Phil, thank you so much. Michael. Thanks for having me, man. The Multisig Master Class. That was awesome. Uh,